So recently I played Portal 2 for the first time, and let me tell you, it's one of those games that ages like wine. Despite 11 years passed after its release, I still enjoyed a lot the adventure and of course solving the puzzles. But one thing that surprised me a lot about Portal 2 is that you can create your own puzzles really easily through an in-game custom level editor. So. Well, I tried to make my own puzzle level, and in this video I want to share with you the process of that, as well as some tips and mistakes I made along the way that should be valuable also in designing other types of puzzle games. So designing a puzzle level seems an easy thing to do at first. Place a button here, a box here, connect a button to the exit, and done. Hmm, maybe it's too easy, maybe we should add more buttons. What about 14 buttons, 14 boxes, and maybe make the player jump pool of deadly ghoul before reaching the exit. Now of course I haven't tried to publish this level, but I'm 100% sure that almost everyone would leave a low rating and insult me in the comments. But why is that? I mean, the puzzle requires a modest amount of time to be solved and there are many boxes and bouncy gel is fun. You see, an important thing to understand when designing puzzle levels is that complex doesn't necessarily mean better. For example, one of my favorite puzzles of Portal 2 is located in this pretty small room and all you have is three lasers and two reflective cubes. Hmm, so how can you tell if a puzzle is good or not? Well, the answer is linearity. Let's go back to the first puzzle we designed. There's a box, there's a button, there's an exit. It's obvious the solution is to move the box on the button. It's the first and most intuitive attempt anyone can think of. For this reason, we can say the puzzle is linear. Well, okay, fine, let's solve this. Let's say the button opens the exit, but also activates a light bridge that needs to be deactivated through another button in order to get to the exit. The most intuitive solution, place the box on the button, does not work, so we don't have a linear puzzle anymore, right? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no, nothing really changed. You see, the general rule to keep in mind is that if you concatenate two or more linear puzzles, you, you still get a linear puzzle. So in our example, we have the first one, the box and the button, and once we solve that, we get a second one, the button and the light bridge. Both have a really trivial solution, so the overall solution is still obvious, and that means the puzzle is linear, so not fun to solve. Okay, so how in the world do we make a non-linear puzzle? To answer this question, let's go back to the Portal 2 level I talked before. In my experience, when we solve a puzzle, we first tend to use our intuition. And in this case, my first attempt was to use the two reflective cubes to deflect a laser into a socket, and then use two portals to lead a second laser to another socket. And to my surprise, this didn't work, because now you don't have anything to deflect the third laser. And since my intuition failed to solve the puzzle, the first thing that comes to my mind is this is impossible, that there's no solution. But then the more rational part of my brain kicks in and says, well, okay, let's think about this. So I 100% need to use a cube here to deflect this laser, but maybe instead of using another cube, I can just make it pass through the portal and haha, now I can use the last cube to make the last laser reach the socket and I solve the puzzle. And it was a way better experience experience than the box on the button puzzle because, well, I had to disengage the automatic pilot of the brain called intuition and think more deeply about a way to solve a problem in front of me. So one of the objectives you should have when trying to design a puzzle level is to fool the intuition. Make it so the most intuitive solution just doesn't work and force the player to look for a workaround. That doesn't mean that your solution has to be obscure. For example, if I make 14 buttons and only one opens the door, I'm just annoying the player. It's really important that all the elements of the puzzle and their purpose should be clear to the player since the start. When I started making my level in Portal 2, I started from the initial classic example of the box on a button and tried to explore different ideas from there. And by doing that, I realized making non-linear puzzles in Portal 2 is really challenging, even more challenging than solving the actual puzzles. And that's because by changing the structure of the puzzle, you usually end up with one that is either linear or impossible. But after many attempts, I must say I'm pretty satisfied with the final result. If you own Portal 2 and want to try to solve my puzzle before I spoil the solution, the link is in the description. 
So as soon as you enter the room, the first thing you see is a button that opens the exit door and inverts the polarity of the tractor beam. After portaling to the middle of the room, you find another button that drops a box that falls in the goo right away. And in the other side of the room, you find some bouncy gel and a well-illuminated portable wall that suggests you probably want to place a portal there. And at this point, your intuition should hint you that in order to solve the puzzle, you need to place a portal at the end of the tractor beam, one of the portable wall, and then drop the box so you're able to catch the cube before it falls in the goo. However, there's a problem. After placing the two portals, there is no way for you to access the middle of the room in order to drop the box without losing the portals. The level is apparently impossible to solve, but the solution exists, as shown in the following clip. Now this puzzle may be too easy or too difficult for you, of course it mainly depends on how much time you've spent solving portal puzzle levels in your life. I just want to point out two more things before ending the video. One, playtest your level a lot, because there may be bugs, of course, or worse, shortcuts that prevent the player from finding the solution you wanted for your puzzle. And two, make sure the player knows what it can and can't this button used to be closer to the bounty gel, but I changed this because you could almost make your way to the middle of the room. And so I thought, well, maybe people would give up on the puzzle because they think the solution is using the bouncy gel to reach the button, but they can just manage to do it. By moving the button farther away, it should be clear that's not the solution. And that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.